Hi guys. It's like a battlefield here in the um, cold and wet um, temperate zone of Melbourne. And that's the um, current temperature in the house, 19 Celsius. That's where we had to have the, um, the thermostat set. And um, I'm going to take you outside now to show you the conditions that we've had for the last five days. Before I take you outside, I want to show you a new toy I bought uh, recently. It's an indoor-outdoor wireless thermometer for the greenhouse. That's the temperature currently in the greenhouse, which is um, 55 in Fahrenheit and 12.8 in Celsius. So let's go out there to the greenhouse now and have a look out there. So even though it's only 12 degrees outside, we're still barefoot guys. We never wear socks here at Fruitopia, not even in winter, never. We never wear socks. So this is um, how things are after uh, five days of um, wintry weather. It's really uh, cold. Now, when I say cold, remember, I'm always comparing the temperature here to the true tropics, right? I'm not comparing to someone who might be in Scotland or someone who might be in New Caledonia, sorry, in, um, in Alaska. I'm comparing this to someone in New Caledonia or someone in Hawaii. That's always my comparison from a temperate climate zone. So that's why I'm saying it's been really horrendous and really cold the last um, five days here in Melbourne. You saw the temperature? 12.8 Celsius. Now, if you live in Scotland, that sounds like um, a great day to have an outdoor party. Well, not here. You go and tell someone in New Caledonia to have an outdoor party when it's 12 Celsius. They'll break down and um, laugh their asses off. So before we go into the greenhouse to see, uh, well, to have an update from the, um, the true tropics in that greenhouse, I'm just going to show you around the garden. This is the, um, the Fuyu persimmon with its leaves um, dropping even more than last time. Just in one week, half the leaves have fallen. But we're having, um, again, parrot problems. They've had about five or six of these persimmons through the net. Show you what I mean. Look at that one up there. Where is it? Uh, up there. See that? They've eaten through one and they're starting a new one. So the persimmons that are nearest the net, they're going for. So that's the, um, the real life um, struggle here with not only weather, cold weather, well, persimmons don't care about cold weather, but um, cold weather and uh, um, wildlife. Yep, anyway, as you can see, the, the fruit now is starting to show once all the leaves start dropping. In about um, two weeks from now, there'll be nothing left but fruit through this netting of um, persimmons. The jujube has almost finished dropping all its leaves. That's beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful, but um, ice cold. <laughs> I've got my, um, look at this, three layers of clothes on. So everything's falling. This is true fall now. May is true fall. The um, end of autumn happens in May <coughs> and early June. So about six weeks of this, well, this one's done, but uh, the apples are the last ones here to lose their leaves. They, they drop their leaves at the very end of autumn 
or beginning of winter so for another, not for another month till the apples start dropping their leaves so uh, still a few apples in there got about um, 20 apples left maybe 30 to collect yet yeah so it's true fall guys it's true fall so this progress will be on um, just about everything and anything um, so we're going from temperate plants to tropical plants to ultra tropical this is the uh, Panama berry or uh, Jamaican berry doing pretty well so far after five days of uh, temperatures going down into the 40s we've been sitting at about 47 48 50 for the last five days I'm using Fahrenheit together with Celsius because I realize our uh, audience is split between two split between America and um, Australia so um, yeah we've had between uh, the lowest we got down to was 7.6 I believe 7.6 Celsius the other night a couple of nights ago and uh, these are completely unaffected so far but uh, next week the forecast is for 5 Celsius which is right on 40 Fahrenheit and as you know 40 Fahrenheit is when all the danger begins when we when we get down to 5 Celsius this is one of the papayas which is doing really good holding in there and not only have we had cold guys but we've had um, cold wind right nasty cold wind where you need three or four layers of clothes yeah so even though the temperature is in the 40s it feels like uh, high 20s low 30s to the skin the guavas are doing wonderful the Mal red Malaysian the white China and the um, Mexican cream and over there the uh, purple one it's doing really well <clears throat> so the red Malaysian China pear um, uh, Mexican cream all doing really good the ice cream bean sorry not the ice cream bean the uh, peanut butter fruit also handling the cold really well it's dropped a few of those um, um, flower buds come on let's focus Okay, doesn't want to focus so right there it's dropped a few there you go it's starting to rain it's got some new ones coming some new flower buds there still a baby the <coughs> peanut butter tree in its second year pomelo the yellow pomelo here has grown very bushy very nice and big I'm getting wet now I might have to resume this this video once the rain stops we've had a, so much rain oh my god you, you guys won't believe how much rain we've had this is how it's been guys it's been raining like this every single day since Wednesday today is Saturday so Wednesday morning it started Tuesday night Wednesday morning Wednesday day Wednesday night Thursday morning Thursday night Friday morning Friday night today Saturday morning Saturday afternoon it doesn't stop raining non-stop rain here at Fruitopia cold wet and cloudy no Sun we haven't seen the Sun since Tuesday no Sun in five days just cold wet miserable weather a bit like being in the UK I don't know how the British can live like this for over six months of the year five days guys five days only five days of this 
Oh my god! Anyway, the good news is uh, it's all turning tomorrow. Right, so I decided to make the video today before the weather turns. Tomorrow we're going to get the sunshine. Tomorrow we're going to hit 15, 16 degrees Celsius. And then on Monday, wow, on Monday we're going to be out there suntanning again on our suntan lounges. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is uh, sun lounge weather. Yep, the sun will be back every day. But I want to show you the contrast between um, sunny, warm, um, delightful weather and what we've had now for the last four or five days. Big difference. Not for the plants. The plants don't seem to mind. Actually, the plants probably enjoy all this rain. But from a human perspective, from a gardener's perspective, wow. Looks like the rain stopped for a moment, but it's um, a lot of black clouds. So I have to go fast. These are the pineapple guavas we've been munching on every single day for the last um, two, three weeks. Every morning they're on the ground when we come out. So uh, absolutely enjoying this abundant crop this year. Just an endless supply of feijoa. A lot of people like to call them feijoa. I like to call them pineapple guava. Yeah, so that's that. The figs are almost done. Almost done, only a couple of stragglers left. So not many figs left. Not many left at all. Maybe 20. There you are, you can see them there. But uh, just about done. Just about over and done with. So even though it's all doomy and gloomy because of the cold and the rain and the wind, right? It's still beautiful, guys. It's still beautiful. You can still enjoy the garden if you're all rugged up and warm, right? You can still enjoy the tropics in a different kind of way. Here you can see the, the bananas that are almost ready to harvest, those ones there those ones and I got some more in there that are almost ready in there right I got one and two and a third um, rack that, that's ready on the other side of the house near the bedroom three large racks that are almost ready they'll be ready in about a month I think at the beginning of uh, winter that is uh, June, around June, they'll be ready. We'll be getting a lot of bananas and people ask me, wow, how can you uh, grow bananas in winter? I don't, they grow in summer, but they're ready in winter. Okay, let's go and look inside the greenhouse and see how these guys are doing. That's the whole idea of this uh, video. Oh my gosh, no sunshine today, so that means no heat. Look at that. The new thermometer said 12.8. Let's see what the analog one says. It says 12.8. Same as the, the digital thermometer. Spot on. So 55 degrees in here. It feels warmer than, than, um, than, than uh, 12 or 13 because of the humidity. The humidity is 99% if you saw the uh, thermometer in a house. So, they're looking pretty good for their first um, two weeks. Yeah, coming up to two weeks that they've been in here. These are the, uh, um, wow, canistel, jackfruit, yellow mangosteen, mango, Longan, another mango, Abiu, um, Star Apple, with all the new leaves coming. Um, back there's a sour sop, the one that was dropping its leaves before I brought it in here. Those leaves there. 
seems to be happy now. It's even getting new shoots here in the greenhouse. If you look closely enough, it's hard to see, but there's shoots coming out out of every, um, um, above every single leaf. There's new shoots coming on the soursop. That's a graviola. I've also got an unknown variety of mango there. Seeds that I put in there um, a couple of months ago. Looks like um, there's two of them. Oops, shaking. And there's another one next to it, which just popped up. I'm not sure if that's going to come up. And um, another jackfruit here. And that's the uh, Rolinia. The Rolinia, guys. Looking pretty impressive. Yeah, so everything's doing real well but look what i just saw here Ooh, not good at all look at these guys you know what they are baby snails so let's just grab them and put them over here next to the cactus yeah i haven't been in here for a couple of days so oh there's another snail on the I think that's the longan yeah so take him as well I have to go through all this later when I finish the video it looks like uh, there's been some female snails in here doing what snails do laying babies oh the only thing that is bad news is the um, Moringa Drumstick tree That's the one I pulled out of the ground It's dropped all its leaves and it's looking sad This is all these fruit trees in here not all of them, but half of them This is exactly what they would look like if I didn't put them in the greenhouse in the winter Okay, so now you know all this in here all this in here would look like this <laughs> by the end of winter if I left them out in the open yep that's why we have a greenhouse we don't want this we don't want this guys now the reason why this happened is not because of the cold it's because of um, an infestation of snails back in um, March April Meanwhile, outdoors here, Babaco's got new, new fruit coming along. That opened uh, uh, two weeks ago when we still have warm sunshine. There's no way in this cold we'd get new fruit. Literally, guys, it feels like um, the Arctic today, like Antarctica. So the Babaco's really shot up and got bushy over March and April. I have five of these. You can see the, the stem. <clears throat> nice and thick. I can't wrap my hand around it. <clears throat> Babaco, mountain papaya. Doing really well. So, uh, everything is doing well. Even with the, um, the lows we've had in the last uh, few days. So don't despair. Anyone out there that's trying to, well, grow tropical, subtropical plants in a temperate climate, don't despair, please. That's why I'm filming this to show you. Well, you'll see in a few days when the sunshine comes out, how good it's gonna look with sunshine. This is the worst. This is the absolute worst um, picture that you'll have when it's cold. Still getting all the tamarillos behind the bungalow here, right? Not a problem. Business as usual. Everything's marching along like um, it's summertime. Even though it's freezing, for the tamarillo it's still summer. Not a problem. Look at this. This is the other 
Tamarillo, the main one that's in the banana circle. Business as usual. Someday I wish to have mangoes growing this easily here at Fruitopia. That's my goal, guys. That's my dream. I achieved that with the uh, avocado. And here we have the bananas that I was showing you from the other side that'll be ready in about a month. Even through this cold, even though it's freezing, doesn't affect them at all. Doesn't affect them at all, guys. Look at that. Doesn't affect them at all. I've had to stake this one up with a stake because it's leaning super duper sideways. Look at that fall, they drop. This is the, the curry tree for all those delicious Indian dishes. There's the babaco from inside the, the circle, banana circle, the greenhouse, bananas, babaco. Here we have uh, gooseberries. They usually fruit in winter and spring. Let's get out of here. Wow. Tamarillos. Beautiful. An orange. Endless. An endless supply of food. Bananas. More bananas. I've got over 100 bananas. Banana plants. Took exactly 10 years. Exactly 10 years this year I've been growing these bananas And you can too You don't need as much room as I have Just keep it simple Use what you have And there's the rain again Raining again Here's another babaco. This one looks a little sad. It might need some food. All these uh, bromeliads and lilies are probably sucking all the energy away from the babaco here. So it needs a bit of uh, fertilizer down at the bottom. So it doesn't look this sad. Look at that. The other babaco I showed you was so much healthier. Even though it's getting new shoots. So it's getting new shoots, look. Maybe it's the cold, I don't know. Here's another babaco. And here's another babaco. Camera's getting wet now. Better go undercover for a bit. So once again, guys, the beauty is still there. Okay, it's all tropical here. Tropical bougainvilliers, still there. Hasn't gone anywhere. Tropical coffee, still here. In this icy cold, windy blast from the south or wherever it's coming from. Front, cold front. Look at that, unaffected. But it can only take so much. When you give this guy, this kind of weather, <laughs> every day for um, a month, it's not going to look like this, I promise you. 
we'll come back to this coffee plant in July if I remember all right let's go and have a look at something else yeah well, this, this is where we suntan when the Sun comes out so even if it's only 15 Celsius if it's uh, 60 Fahrenheit that's all we need alrighty so you can see the wind there at action in action the star fruit this year didn't flower first time it hasn't flowered in five six years which is really strange I, I really did a lot for it gave it a lot of water it can take a lot of water this guy a lot of water uh, and my other star fruit didn't flower either they both flowered last year and the year before and the year before that the uh, avocado seedlings are doing really good Pinkerton it's just growing and growing and growing and and it's getting a lot of shoots now all along new shoots all along every stem every stem right across right across so but the thing is look at this it's been holding water for four days at the bottom now I don't know how deep that is um, can't zoom in there's some water down there right there it is see the water it's been sitting like that for four days since Wednesday but thankfully that's right at the bottom of this pipe not at the at the surface where the roots are so like I gave it some uh, uh, um, what's it called clay breaker gypsum to deal with that yesterday all the avocados got that mmm so I'm getting wet guys I'm getting wet there's the other papaya still small the fuerte avocado still huge and getting huger by the day love it I don't know how it's gonna work in here though with the uh, tight space of this cherry moya which is growing taller every day and the uh, ice cream being above everyone at the top very interesting combination getting wet here getting wet getting cold wind and um, on uh, Tuesday I trimmed one of the well the largest hedge we have in the front of the street so I brought all the hedge trimmings here for the avocado and for the cherry moya look at this look at this for a for a dump I dumped all the uh, trimmings from the the front hedge for the uh, cherry moya here yep a whole barrel full so under here now understory it's like a rainforest a cold rainforest let's find out how cold there's some more of those cuttings for the papaya and the rolinia ah let's have a look at the temperature Ooh, it's below 10 looks like 9.5 Celsius Wow so in the greenhouse where it's 13 it's a heat wave just kidding I better get out of here I'm getting drenched and so is this phone Tahiti black sapoti the lemon tree that I butchered look how I butchered it look at that huh see how it's getting a new new shoots coming on every branch told you it would make it I told you it would make it okay guys I gotta get out of here it's getting too wet whoa the ice cream bean is gonna collapse with this wind
Why didn't I say that? It's a storm. This is what it's been like since Wednesday. Cold, cold winds, wet, and uh, oh, just nasty. Nasty, 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 nasty. All right, let's get out of here. Whew. I think I've got water on the lens. Ah. Huh. Tropical magnolia. <laughs> not a problem, not a problem, guys. Yep, still flowering. Beautiful. Perfume flowers. Still coming, still coming. Even with all the cold. Right? Four days of cold aren't gonna make any impact on the tropical plants. But when you have four weeks, ooh, then you notice it. Things start turning brown. You'll see these bananas by July, every leaf will be brown. So we're gonna have not four weeks of this nasty weather, we're gonna have uh, four months. We'll make that five months. This nasty weather does not end until October here in um, our temperate climate. We're gonna have weather like this until October. Yep, cold, wet, windy, cloudy, and in between when there's sunshine, believe it or not, we're gonna be going to the beach and swimming. Because we um, have come to the realization of cold water therapy. And we talk about that on my other YouTube channel. Check it out and see what we get up to, not only in winter, but all year round. It's called Real Life Adventures. All right, let's go and check out the front. Uh-oh. What are these guys? <clears throat> ah, ah, more pineapple guava. How do you know the pineapple guava is ready? It'll roll down the driveway and come straight to you. That's how. All right, let's have a look at the front. It's still raining, so hopefully we can do some filming here without getting drenched. Whew. So, here we have the, the mango, that's the Glen, A-OK, -okay, with this cold, completely unaffected, and probably give us some new growth, like it does every year, in uh, June, believe it or not, at the very beginning of winter, this guy comes to life, he thinks it's um, spring, no kidding, you'll see in about a month from now, this will be covered in brand new shoots when winter um, gets started very strange this is in ground by the way okay in ground we still have our tropical hibiscus just hanging on for another month these guys call it quits at the end of may Still have a few of the Wampies. This one is split. Mm. Mm. A lot sweeter than a month ago. I had one the other day. It was this color here. And it wasn't too bad. It wasn't so sour. Mmm, yeah. Much better. Much better. That's the hedge I trimmed on Tuesday. It's uh, six and a half feet tall. 2.2 .2 meters. So, uh, big job. And that's the back of it. I got that done just before this cold snap arrived. So I was in shorts and uh, t-shirt. The other two pomegranates dropping their leaves for late autumn. Goodbye, goodbye. 
the jacaranda keeps all its leaves through winter or in autumn doesn't drop them this one drops its leaves in summer yeah jacaranda drops its leaves in summer not autumn not winter oh wow I can see some blue sky now oh my gosh my fingers are numb my hands are numb I can't feel anything from the cold you might be laughing guys but um, you have no idea how cold it is unless you're here in Melbourne these are white sapoti still rock hard on this variety here don't ask me about varieties right now I've got no sense on my fingers um, this is the black mulberry the Hicks fancy we've been eating this for the last uh, close to a month now the late variety uh, there's a red one and there's a black one up there I can get that Hmm. Uh, this was a bit red still. It's all right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this is almost, almost ever bearing. Saw another one up here. They're pretty good at hiding. And luckily the birds didn't come through the nets. Here's another one. This one is really soft. Oop. Hmm. Why support is here? Still hard. Still hard. Still hard. Oh. I didn't look down. There's three, four that are ready on the ground. Oh, five. Oh. Oh. Mm. That one's a bit overripe. So let's take these inside. See, everything's wet. See how wet my hand is? Drenching wet. We're done with these lemon guavas. These are the very last ones. And then it's like um, this one there too, a couple back there. But now we're gonna have to wait for the young ones. There's a few there. The young ones to come, these ones here. I wonder if they're gonna come. We've never had lemon guavas after April. This is gonna be a first if we get any in uh, May and June. And then these ones here who just finished flowering, if they're ever gonna turn into into fruit. Look, look how many came. How many flowers we've got in April. So I was just wondering what's going to happen with these. This will be something new and they're everywhere. They're everywhere. It'll be wonderful if we get lemon guavas from April till June. Not in this weather though. If it stays cold like this, forget it. But the good news is it's going to warm up next week and hopefully it stays warm. Passion fruit has just about stopped growing, both of them. This one here, I had to tie it up yesterday or a few days ago. It was growing up to the cable there. So that'll be interesting to see what it does next year or next uh, spring. Bougainvillea going strong. It's still summertime, guys. I'll be filming this when it gets sunny in a few days in my, in my um, Speedo. So even though the season is over for this white chatut mulberry, it's still bringing on new uh, mulberries. Amazing. Mm. Amazing. Mm. But they're hidden. They're still coming though. Very strange. Look how long that one is. Huh? At least four four inches There's some more there 
packed with late mulberries. We didn't get any red ones in autumn, but we did the last couple of years. The red uh, chatut. Yeah, so <clears throat> wonderful tree. The white chatut or white Pakistani. This drops its leaves in winter in around uh, June, July. That's when I get the chainsaw out and bring it down halfway. And I'm gonna end it here, guys, with another white um, uh, sapoti. It's dropping all its uh, excess fruit. Packed. This one is packed to the brim. Different size uh, fruits. Look at that. So, a monster. This is the most prolific and largest one we have this year. All around. Carrying at least 50 or more fruit. And I don't know what variety this is. I'm guessing it's uh, lemon gold. Just a guess. This should be ready by the end of May. So May is when we're gonna get these. So in a couple of weeks, check it out. Very tropical, even with this cold blast. Ah, so guys, thanks for watching this extra long video. Sorry that it's uh, not in 4K because the longer videos can't be made in 4K. That's just a file limitation. And uh, thanks for, for watching. Put a like, subscribe if you haven't. And we're gonna come back when the weather is uh, when the good weather is back for the next video. So uh, see you from that next video.